A land of a thousand lakes, Finland. Finland is shaped like a summer squash, with the Arctic Circle the stem, the capital of Helsinki the base, and the lake region the fleshiest part, where the country bellies out. Just about at Finland's center of gravity is Henkisomi, home to my Finnish friend and traveling companion, as well as our point of departure from which to tour Keski Suomi, or Middle Finland, as the lake region is called. The cities of Kuopio to the northeast, Savonlinna to the southeast, and Jyväskylä and Tampere to the southwest were all between one and three hours drive away. Finland is called the Land of Thousand Lakes, but at last count, there were 187,888 of them, more lakes in relation to a country's size than any other. Indeed, with a population of about 5 million, Finland has one lake for every 26 people. Most of the lakes are in a region that stretches from above Kuopio in the north to Lodi in the south, and from Tampere in the west to Pankaharju and the Russian border in the east. Hankasalmi straddles the shores of one of them, Kuhankavesi, where on my first day in Finland, a dozen or so tow-headed bathers lays on the birch-dotted beach or dived off the wooden pier, carefully heeding the kivi sign that warned of rocks below. My friend Merja Karjalainen, immersed to her waist, performed one of the rites of summer in Finnish Lakeland, washing her cotton rag rugs with a hard bristle brush, biodegradable soap, and lots of elbow grease. A lone windsurfer, rounding one of the islands far out into the lake, clung to his sail, cutting a tiny red triangle out of the swath of dark green pine and spruce forests on the far shore. With the exception of this handful of people, there were no other signs of human life on the lake. So it would be most of the times I went to Kuhankavesi to swim. So it would be when I swam in the other lakes we visited. And where there are lakes, there are forests. Two-thirds of Finland's surface area is forest, pine, spruce, and birch. Finland must be the only country in the world where you can't see the trees for the forest, let alone the lakes through the trees. Mike Coleman, a friend of Merge's and a transplanted Irishman, told me when I waxed poetic over his adopted country's charms. Finland, one of the most densely forested countries in the world, contains 10 times as much forest per person as any other part of Europe. To Mike, this fact was oppressive, claustrophobic. But to Mike's Finnish wife, Circa, the forests represent her homeland's greatest resource, the stuff and substance of traditional Finnish houses, summer cottages, saunas, boats, Finnish handicrafts, without which the Finnish way of life would not exist. Because public access to lakes, forests, and other outdoor areas is granted every Finn by law and custom. It's known as everyman's rights. Anybody may walk in the woods, pick berries along the footpaths, and swim in the lakes, as long as they keep a respectful distance from the owner's front door. If anything is off-limits in Finland, it is high fences and keep-out signs. Perhaps the best way to come to grips with Finland's wide-open spaces and scant population is to drive to Kuopio, a university town of 77,000, where Puijo Tower rises 246 feet above the city. At its summit, a glass-sided revolving restaurant provides views of the surrounding area. From this perspective, Kuopio almost dissolves into a tapestry of densely packed evergreen forests, pale green fields of rye set off by an occasional red utcher farmhouse and deep blue Calavesi Lake below, with darker lakes far beyond, all of them studded with scores of emerald green islands even more primeval than their surroundings. While you can survey a wide sweep of Kuopio's natural beauty from Puijo Tower in the Russian Orthodox Museum, it is Kuopio's artistic heritage that comes under scrutiny. Gathered from churches and monasteries in those areas of eastern Finland ceded to Russia after World War II, the icons, liturgical textiles, and clerical vestments housed in the museum form one of the most important collections outside the Soviet Union. Finland today maintains an amiable but autonomous relationship with its huge neighbor to the east and is proud that alone among small nations involved in World War II. Its democratic system never ceased functioning, and it successfully resettled the 400,000 Finns who lost their homes under the peace treaty signed with Moscow. About 100 miles southeast of Kopio and closer to Russia lies another town noted for its artistic treasures, though in Savonlinna it is the performing arts, opera in particular, 
that holds center stage. Every July, Savinlina is transformed from a sleepy little town of 28,500 to a cultural hub filled with 100,000 Finnish and foreign music lovers come to attend the Savinlin Opera Festival, one of Europe's oldest musical events. Since its inauguration in 1912, the Opera Festival has been held in Olivenlinna Castle, built in 1475 to defend the Finnish-Swedish eastern border, and today Scandinavia's largest operatic stage. Savinlinna, even in July, is not all opera. The city sits on the shores of Finland's largest lake, Sema, and a cruise on the lake is one of its delights. On board the Figaro, one of three steamships plying the Sema in summertime and bearing operatic names, the other two are Fidelio and Faust. We chugged out of the passenger harbor for a 75-minute cruise among clusters of islands. Some were uninhabited, others half concealing behind some tall evergreens a single summer cottage and or visible, a much smaller but essential sauna. A visitor's experience of Finland is not complete without two initiations, immersion in a Finnish lake and a trial by fire. The traditional wood-burning sauna stoked to a melting 171 to 212 degrees and supplied with fragrant birch branches for whisking the body to induce further sweating. Better yet, and more authentic, is combining the baptisms, alternating the sauna with dips in a lake. The sauna, pronounced sona, the first syllable rhyming with cow, is a Finnish cultural institution and can be found not only in almost every home in Finland, but also in hotels, holiday villages, holiday cottages, and even many campgrounds. We could have taken a second steamship, the Heinevesi, from Savonlinna to Punkaharju, but we chose to drive the 14 miles southeast instead, the better to see Punkaharju, a four-mile-long esker considered to be one of the most beautiful spots in all of Finland. A sliver of land two lanes wide in an intricate latticework of lakes, islands, land bridges, and peninsulas. In Punkaharju, not far from the Russian border, art and nature merge seamlessly at Retreti, the largest center for the fine and performing arts in Finland. Soon after Retreti opened in 1983, blasting began deep in the granite bedrock to create underground caverns and labyrinthine passageways 80 feet underground, providing an aesthetic and natural background for works by some of Finland's leading sculptors and craftsmen. Opera, jazz, dance, and drama are all offered in a rough-walled underground concert hall with a seating capacity of 1,000. Above ground are Retretti's galleries of paintings, drawings, and textile art, as well as its outdoor sculpture garden filled with works by Olavi Lanu. Working with hay, birch bark, and moss, Mr. Lanu has shaped often monumental human forms out of these products of Finnish nature and placed them in their natural environment to rot in the woods to return to the cycle of nature. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. Before you go, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.